yesterday. And by his grace, I'm going to add as the Lord will also give me the grace to do so. We are going to look at this under a special arrangement that we call special meal. And before we take the meal, this is what I have to share with us. First Samuel chapter number 17. Please pick up your Bible. I want to believe all of us came here with our Bibles. If you don't have Bible, please let us know. We have spare Bible to give to you. Because we have to read together. There will be portions of the Bible. I'm going to read one or two verses. You read the following one so that all of us can follow. And one thing I want to establish in what I want to share with us. What I want to establish is that every grace that you have to come into the presence of the Lord, to receive from the Lord, is something that you should not joke with at all. It's something that you should guide so jealously because you are being empowered for something in the nearest future. That thing you may not know even for now. But there are things that by the time you get there, you begin to see it. And you begin to see that, yes, you have been well equipped. So that's why you don't joke with something like this. And I know the one you have received since yesterday. And the one you are going to receive more. You will glorify the name of the Lord very shortly because of all of them. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear somebody saying amen? amen? First Samuel chapter 17, we're going to look at that wonderful man. Here, he was a boy at that time. The wonderful man that the Lord said he was a man after his heart. We want to see a kind of developmental stages that the Lord took him through. We want to look at just an aspect of his testimony. And I'm going to quickly connect it to what we are going to do tonight. Let me also say this unto you. Let everyone rise up against you. The Lord will deliver you in the name of Jesus. Amen. How many children of God are ready to say one more amen? amen. We're going to look at the story from verse number 31. Yes, let somebody just read. We can't hear you. The word, and when the words were heard which David speak, they beheld them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. The servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine. Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine. This giant we know. You, we do not know you. This giant, we have his credentials. You, we know nothing about you. This giant, even his build up alone, is more than anything. You cannot come near him. This giant, for the past 40 something days, has been threatening us. None of us, including myself, could confront him. How dare you? The Bible said that Saul said to David, Thou are not able to do not case. waste your time, do not waste your life. You are just an upcoming individual. Only God knows what you are going to become. But if you now come and confront the unconfrontable, then of course you are going to waste your life. Somebody is here this morning. You have been receiving and receiving. But there is going to be a day very shortly Amen. that your testimony will be known to the whole world in the name of Jesus. Amen. How many of you are shouting amen? amen? Let me quickly drop this for you. By the special grace of God, you know the whole church used to be here. CNN's movement church, if a world road district. Now, I mean, if a world road church. Now, if a world road district headquarters. 
I started coming here. Nobody invited me to this church. When I was in the university, I refused to go to any church. I was doing so many other things here and there. So when I was about graduating, I started going to one fellowship very close to my hall of residence. But when I got to Ibadan to serve, I lived around here. And every Sunday, I would always be at home. I would be hearing hymns. I would be hearing songs. And my heart would not be at rest. A friend of mine came one day. He said, but you call yourself CNS person. Your church is not far from this place. Why will you not go every Sunday? I said, get out. But when that friend left, I was ruminating over it. And the next Sunday, I was here. That's not the story. There was one day, a prophetess just invited me outside there. Really, just like I've been sharing with us, if not for God, who says you are going to be this and that. I am not interested in all these things. I will not come to church until everybody has been settled down. And I will leave before anybody will leave. Because I don't want to be known by anybody. So she just called me. She had calculated. She knew when I would come in. And she knew I would not finish a service. The worst that will happen is that when they will be saying, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Iye, I will be already in my car. And I will drove off. So at the peak of the service, she invited me outside. And she said, Alaba, I want to give an assignment to you. She said it this way. She said it was an insultive assignment. I said, Mommy, what? She now told me their band will be having an anniversary so so about two Sundays to that time. She said, you are going to preach for us. I look at her face. I said, what did you say? She said, you will preach for us in our anniversary. I said, but you have never seen me preaching before. You have never seen me even sharing the word of the Lord before. She said, do you know that I'm a prophetess? That God asked me to tell you that you will be the preacher for that day. Please go and think about it. You are hearing this message this morning from where you are. The Lord will locate you in the name of Jesus. You didn't shout that amen very well. Who is reading for us? Yes. And Saul so said to David, "Thou are not able to go against You this are Philistine. not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. To fight with him. For thou art but for a youth. For thou art but a youth. And he a man and of war. a man of war his youth. from his youth. Go ahead. And David said unto David Saul, said unto him, Thy servant, thy servant kept his kept father's his sheep. Father sheep. And there came a there lion. Came a lion. And a there came a bear and took a lamb, and out, took of a lamb floor, out of the flock and I went out after, and him, went out after and him and smote him and, him and delivered and it out, out of his and when he arose against and me, when he arose against I, me caught him by I caught him by his beard and smote I smote him, him and slew I slew him, him. look at all those languages lion. and look at those vocabularies you don't know that some People that are close to you, they are not your friends. They are like lions unto you. They are like bears unto you. And the man of God has shared that something with me. He said that there are people that are known as bearish friend. Bearish friend. B-E-A-R-I-S-H. That is, you think they are friends, but they are bears. And the man of God was talking to me. He said that beer has a particular characteristic. And the characteristic is that he's a big animal. And when beer wants to actually attack, the beer will just come closer and get his prey and begin to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. And the only thing is that it will squeeze life out of that prey. If you have any friend there who is your enemy and you don't know, 
From today, the Lord will show to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, now when you look at lion, lion is another dangerous animal. So, you could see a young boy. The Lord deliver lion into his hand. The Lord deliver bear into his hand. And eventually, before we leave now, you will see that God also deliver Goliath into his hand. So, when Saul was asking questions, he said, Daddy, don't worry. Let me just give you a tip of the iceberg. Lion, beard, God delivered into my hands. And I know that the Lord that delivered those two into my hands, this Philistine, God is going to deliver him into my hands. And I know if there is any Philistine in your land, because we are getting closer and closer to the end of this program, and we are also getting closer to the prophetic session. And of course, we have even started prophetic declarations even since the beginning of this program. I also release this upon your life that God Almighty, who has brought you here today, will deliver you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Child of God, I didn't hear your amen. amen. Child of God, I didn't hear your amen. amen. So he said to Saul, I overcame lion and I overcame bear because I have been empowered to do that. If you have friends, you have colleagues and a program like this is coming up and he or she says, no, I am not going. Please beg him or her. I am not saying the one that is holding here alone. It's not because by the grace of God I pastor this church. It's not that I'm asking you to come. Anytime you want to come, it's a trouble upon my life. When we were to start yesterday, I was a little bit enraged. Two of you came to me. I said, I'm, not, I'm busy. Because what I was doing was preparing for the program. And I discovered that you that even said that you are the organizers, you are not organizing anything. So it's like a burden upon me. So I am not inviting you to this place. But I'm inviting you to everything that is of God. Where the word of the Lord is being shared. Where you have the true declarations concerning your life. Because as you are growing up, all these things are there for you as empowerment. You never can say, one day is coming. You know, I told you, that woman called me outside. She had never, the only thing that I should believe she has seen about me, maybe about two things. One, physical. There was a day I asked a question in the Bible class. I could remember. That was the only one. I just raised my hand up. And everybody was so happy. I asked a question. And that was all. Maybe the second one will be from the spirit. But one thing I want to tell you. That year. As I preached on this altar. They used to put one puppet there. As I pushed on that puppet. That same year. Another band came to me. They said you are going to preach. Maybe I preached about three times. Because already something was upon my life. And that was the reason when I stood before the people of God, I was able to bring that thing out. And I've always been telling you, everything will go away, but there's something right inside of you that will continue to be with you. That's why empowerment is very, very important. As a child of God, you can encounter anything, anytime. And that's why you have been told, even at the worst situation, you must praise the name of the Lord. Because you have an empowerment in your life that even before the trouble comes upon you, you are already a winner. Before the trouble comes, God has delivered into your hands. And that is why you should not joke with the word of the Lord. And that's why you should not also joke with your life. Oh, young people, you want to exploit and all that and all that. But there are some exploration that will lead you to destruction. Because all this empowerment, if you go from here and you begin to go wayward, you go the ways of the world, then of course you have neutralized it. I pray in the name of Jesus, that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Someone did not say that amen very well. The owner of the declaration refused to say amen. Please read quickly. Yes. 
They servants still bore the lion and the bear. Uh -huh. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as this one of them. This uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. See, he had defied See, the armies of the living God. He had defied the armies of the living God. David was able to know this because of what was already upon his life. Some other persons of his age might not know that if somebody speaks against God, that that person is already a dead person. Anyone that speaks against the original God that we serve, anyone that mesmerizes with the name of the Lord is already a dead individual. I don't care how many years that person will live on this planet earth, but the day he does that, he's already a dead person. The only person that can deliver him is the same God. So if anybody is talking to you and just talk anyhow about your God, you don't need to do anything. Just walk away. Just like my brother said, let your attention not be upon that person. He said, you these guys, you say you are this, you are that. Of course, I am not a church preacher and I don't want to be one. Christ is enough for us to preach anywhere. And just like he said, not a church alone. The church is not in unity. The church generally. And that's why somebody is saying, you are not of my denomination. We cannot worship together. It's not our fault. The kingdom of darkness is operating. Because the kingdom of darkness knows that when church speaks with one voice, oh God, oh God, oh God. <laughs> because God will have no choice. I pray in the name of Jesus. God will give us the grace amen. to speak as his church in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are not shouting your amen. 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 amen. Yes, you are still reading. David said moreover. David said moreover. The Lord that delivered me out of the power of the lion. Now, if not for the empowerment upon his life, he would have abrogated the victory he had over bear and lion to himself but because of empowerment because he knew it he knew it was the work of the lord he knew it was not by power he knew it was not by might he knew it was just by the spirit of the lord and he confessed it and when you look at it you will see great element of praise there he recognized what God has done for him. And he said it out. One of the ways by which you can praise God is for you to come and say, God has done so, so, so for me. You testify by the testimony of people. A lot of people are delivered. This morning, I see a lot being delivered in the name of Amen. Jesus. Yes, quickly, because I want the to Lord go. The Lord that delivered me out of the power of the lion. Yes. And out of the power of the bear. Yes. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Now, Christine. apart from appreciating God, he says, he will deliver me. My faith is solely on Christ Jesus. Nothing can happen to me. You must be able to stand and say, nothing. I am a child of God. Like I've always been telling our people, I said, never mind. When you go outside, let somebody just point accusing fingers onto you. The person is already in trouble because you have your father there. And one day God told me, and I said it in the open air. I said, I have become a dangerous individual because I have no father. I have no earthly mother any longer. And God said to me, just allow anybody to mess you. Because anybody that is fatherless and motherless, I become the father to that person. And that is why I do anything. Not anything outside of God. I do what God asks me to do. I don't listen to people. When you talk and say, I have to come and change what God has said, I won't listen to you. Go and do whatever you like. Because my father is there. And I decree in the name of Jesus, this thing you are receiving tonight... Oh God, you will start to make use of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. David said, my father, that is God that delivered me, will also deliver me of this man. I will overcome it. So you must have it at the back of your mind at every point in time that you are more than a conqueror. Just like a brother said, you are an overcomer. He said to us when he stepped into Jesus Christ, he had been a victor since that time. So nobody here from today must have anything less than that. 
your mentality must change. You must begin to have possibility mentality. You must believe that yes, with God, nothing shall be impossible. It was said by angel. It was said by Jesus Christ. It was documented in the Bible. What else do you want? With God, nothing shall be impossible. That's what we call limitless possibilities. And I know in the name of Jesus, <laughs> we are stepping into that 2018 year. Amen. How many days, ladies and gentlemen? You have forgotten again. I said every day begin to cut. Eight days. Eight days. Eight days. You are not answering the question. Eight days. Okay, you have not calculated. I've told you, don't give yourself any. Don't be too. Don't be too scientific. Just use your hand. One, two, three, four, five. That's why God has given us ten here. And if you still have more, you use your legs. I remember in primary school, you don't give yourself any problem. You begin to say one, two, three. You can't tell. You know another ten is somewhere there. Amen, somebody. Amen. And when you can't ten here, ten there, you know you can count again. Twenty, you have it with you. And I told our people, I said, go to the bush, cut some small, small sticks, and put them by your side. Begin to remove one. Amen. Amen. So, as long as God is there, you will step into 2018 in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Yes, go ahead, my and, sister. And so said unto David. So said unto David. Go. Go. And the Lord be with thee. Because the credential was overwhelming. If God has delivered you, if you still have this faith in God, now the same God shall deliver you. Somebody is here this morning after taking this meal. Oh God, you will be completely delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can I hear you saying your amen? amen? Can I hear you saying your amen? amen? Can I hear you saying your amen? amen? So what we are about taking is part of the empowerment for the day. As many times as possible, this meal is a special meal. You can take it. It's not a ceremonial meal. Any time if you have a situation like this, get your heart prepared because you are taking something that, oh God, is going to do something great in your life. Sometimes it may not manifest immediately, but one day is coming. Just like the day David came into the battlefront and the thing was so clear that he was going to win and eventually he won. He won lion, he won bear, he won Goliath. How many of that do you have in your life? You take this meal this morning, you win all of them in the name of Jesus. Can I hear you saying your amen? I don't want us to continue to read so many things there. You know them. You know when David now came unto him, they look at themselves. Goliath spoke the way he was speaking. David spoke the way he was also speaking. So one was good in the ears of God. And the other one, God rejected God will not reject your word. Yeah. I say your voice from today, God will not reject. Yeah. You have forgotten Solomon, your brother. The Bible said, the word pleased the Lord. The word of Solomon. God said, ask me. And the Bible said, the word pleased the Lord. So that means that a child of God, when I see people, they say they are Christian, they talk anyhow. Oh God, I begin to wonder. They talk all their lives off. I begin to wonder. They speak to people anyhow. I begin to wonder. So how can you say you are a child of God and you just speak anyhow? Besides that, if the same language that the people out there are speaking is the same that you are speaking, something is wrong somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen. So all those things, they are the things you get to know from places where you go to hear the word of the Lord, they are equally empowerment. Because the more you can keep your mouth, the more you are being empowered, the more you are keeping your destiny, the more you can get to your destiny quicker than that person that begins to talk and talk and talk. Somebody was talking to me one day. He said, the moment I know somebody to be a child of God, I don't hide any secret from him or her. I just look at him. Agbalagba. Agbalagba fa. <laughs> the Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Goliath spoke his word, arrogance word and all that. And the humility upon David made him to speak the way he spoke. He hung everything upon God. 
and the Lord delivered him. The Lord shall deliver you in Jesus' name. You are not shouting your amen. amen. So the same, the same meal that was taken in the book of Exodus chapter 12, a liberation came unto the Israelite, is the meal we are going to take this morning. The one I've just told you, I'm telling you that there's something you need to continue to do to be empowered so that when that time comes, you will be able to stand. It is what is left in you that is going to stand. So anyone that is here that is ready, I am congratulating you. If you are not ready, it's not compulsory. Because the book, the Bible is very clear about it. It's not because you are hungry, you want to come and eat it. No, it's a special meal. You have to prepare your heart. You must know that you don't come to take this meal anyhow. And I know God is going to help you in Jesus' name. So one of the things you do quickly is if you are ready and you know that you still have iniquity in your way, you begin to confess those iniquity. God is a good God. He said he has sent his son to this world not to condemn. It's not to condemn. It's for us to be delivered. So as many times as possible, you can read that portion and you are conscious of it. Then of course you can be set free. So within one or two minutes, God can wipe off all your sins if you are so genuine about it. Say, God, please forgive me and all that. Then you can be. But if you cannot do that, please stay away. Thank God another one is coming very shortly. Or when you get to your church, you can take any other one. But this one, don't come and take it unwantingly. God is going to help you in Jesus' name. I'd like you to bow down your head to prayers before you begin to come now. The very first one is that if you are ready and you have searched your heart, and you know you, you, are, you know you are coming, just say, God, this is another, another grace to be empowered more. So as I come, Lord, give me more empowerment in the name of Jesus. You that is preparing your heart, then begin to confess your sins. You must start to do that before you pray the first prayer. Say to God, please prepare my heart. Yes, I am this, I am that. You cannot hide from God. You can hide from me. You can hide from your pastor, but not from God. So just ask God, Father, please forgive me every of my iniquity that will not make me fit to take this meal in the name of Jesus. I hope you are doing that. I hope somebody is doing that. I hope the whole church is doing that. And as you are doing that, the Lord will answer your prayers in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we bless this food in the name of Jesus. Amen. Daddy, I decree in the name of Jesus because this is the blood of Jesus represented by the wine and this is the flesh of Jesus. Lord, I decree in the name of Jesus as many as will be taking it this morning, let it be unto them. Your flesh and your blood in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let it be unto everyone your flesh and your blood in the name of Jesus. Amen. And what power that is embedded in your flesh and in your blood. Let those power begin to work in our lives in the name of Jesus. As they say amen, it shall be well with their soul. It shall be so into their lives. Thank you, glorious Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. How many people are blessed? Say amen. amen. Say I am blessed. Amen. amen. You didn't say it. Say I am blessed. Amen. amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. So very quickly, we'll be coming to take it. Please come in the humility of hearts. We're going to be very fast. I just don't want us to miss it. That's why I said let's start from there. Because we are washing time. We are supposed to finish this service 6 o'clock. And we have said about 45 minutes, one hour, we do cleaning. So I pray God will uh, help you and grant unto us everything that we are doing here in the name of Jesus. Praise crew, can you give us check our hymns? We have some special songs there. It's not the kind of uh, something you sing. Check the hymn. Hymna, hymns. hymns. Bring the book out, please. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, 
Awajua shekulo Awajua shekulo Nitori awabeke wade ojishi Awajua shekulo Atika shekulo Awajua shekulo Atika shekulo Awajua shekulo Nitori awabeke wade ojishi Awajua shekulo you want so you Oh, 